Welcome to Sunday in the South. I have been procrastinating on my video because I thought I was going to have the, the announcement that my book is up and for sale, but not quite yet. Ah! So just a few more hours maybe. But anyway, that's not why I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you to say this. First of all, I wish that I could be like the cool kids. All of them seem to fit in. How about this? How about be different and be yourself and let the other people try to fit in with you? You know, it's all about your perception and perspective of who the cool kid is, right? You know what's beautiful to me? Somebody vibrating on their own frequency, their own authenticity, different than everybody else, uniquely their own, no matter what. Last night, something interesting happened yesterday, and I was, um... A couple other things. Remind me to tell you something else. But first of all, Christopher and I were out of the house all day long. I had a big smoothie before we left, which tied me over. I don't have to, like, pack up all this stuff to go with me, you know. Oh, do I have this or that? No, I don't stress. I take me. There is raw food everywhere. And if not, guess what? I can wait a minute. I'm in control of my domain. Do you know what I mean? Um... But anyway, so we had gone um, out on an adventure in Western North Carolina where it was so beautiful. And we went horseback riding and, and he went to the shooting range and very scary, but safety precautions and more like a, um, a protection situation of learning, you know. But anyway, not really my thing, but... Um, you know, I try to conform to be a mom and a dad. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, we did that. And um, while we were horseback riding, I will tell you about this. We saw a walnut tree. And there were these, I had to ask the guide, what are the, what is that kind of fruit? And she said, that's a walnut. It came in this big ball, almost like a in-between a golf ball and, a, and a, not quite a baseball size, but pretty big. My point is this. You would have to get through all that skin down to the seed, crack the seed, finagle out the walnut, pick all its little walnut particles off before you could eat that raw nut, which furthermore would not even taste like the nuts you're used to that are pretty much usually dehydrated and they're usually not raw. They say raw, but it's really a lie. We know this. The point is this, you can only get those seasonally also. This is why nuts are not um, the optimum food for us to be buying canister after canister and eating just ginormous quantities of that. You wouldn't be able to get that all year long in nature. You would not be able to sustain yourself by just eating that by picking through that and trying to get this little bit of food, you know? So that's why it makes perfect sense that we need a little bit of very moderate fat, and that's all we need, you know? But anyway, so we had gone to do that. We were gone all day long. There were some snacks in between. I had some, um, I had some spotty bananas and water, and anyway, so we went to dinner. Well, the dinner was, um, a very fancy dinner and uh, there had been a big golf thing there so it was like more of a buffet and um, they had all the buffet I didn't even think well let me go and oh what am I gonna have am, am I gonna look different am I gonna no I politely ordered a salad and when it was time for everybody to eat I had that you know um, with an enormous bed of greens with some um, little dates on there and some sun-dried tomatoes and some avocado and I squeezed some lemon and lime and BAM and it was the most delicious thing I could have eaten with a little cracked peppercorn on there so I just wanted to say that and and here's the main thing so Christopher and I eaten in quite a few hours and we are, we usually eat an earlier dinner around here 
Well, by the time everybody hooplawed and all that, and, and it was a fundraiser, so there was some talk about that and all, it was later than he normally eats. Now, Christopher has been off of the meat for probably eight months. That was not, that was with my guidance, but without my pushing and without my even suggesting that now's the time. You know, he came to that conclusion on his own, and he's not wanted any meat. But as we had been to that bar, um, he saw this sausage, very, uh, very moist looking, which we know would be grease, sausage, and there was, I think, some pork chop cutlets, I think it was. It might have been Canadian bacon. It was all pig is my point. And we came back before we, we were going to serve our plates, or he was going to serve his, and he was like, that meat looks really good. And, and I was like, oh, baby, don't, don't do it. You know, and he's like, yeah, but y'all hadn't had it in a long time, and it looks really good, and, um, you know, it's probably it's probably a good cut of meat, and I I was like, um, you know, you're undercarbed. It's later than you normally eat. Um, try to fill up on there was a nice what looked like a whole wheat pasta dish. There was some um, sliced, more like grilled, um, and maybe a little saute on there, but uh, potatoes. There were several different things. There were green beans. There was slaw. There was lots of things like that. Fill up on that first and then see how you feel, you know? And guess what? He did not choose to eat that. He filled up on that and he felt fine. What was the problem is he was undercarbed. And do you realize that people still feel like carbs are the enemy? Is that not shocking? You know what? White sugar, it's not good for you. That is not good for the body. That is empty calories. I'm talking about wholesome carbs. People need to get on the bandwagon of learning what's going on, you know, and quit letting the meat and, and dairy industry cram it down your throat that um, milk does a body good, for example, you know. So anyway, I was proud of Christopher, and I just wanted to brag on that. And I also want to say this. A while ago, yesterday, y'all saw me make the pump, Chia Pumpkin Dehydrated Crackers. Well, they turned out really good. Now, these few were kind of in the middle of the dehydrator and I put them in a separate bag because they were dried but not all the way. Here's a small example and you can see the ones that were all crispy were totally stiff more like Doritos but these do you see how they have like a little flexibility? So what you can do is actually wrap up all of your salad greens this salad this is a huge salad and this will just be like a small example for you because I'm using one hand, but um, as you see, it's a little mini taco. Hey, hey, you want to eat me? But the thing is, in that salad, I have some um, baby organic baby kale, which they have at Costco's now. It's very, very tasty. Kind of looks like this, and then I have uh, mushrooms, carrots. I have a little bit of dates cut up really small in there. And um, I have some paprika, a little bit of cucumber, a little bit of red bell pepper, and lime squeezed on there. And then I like mash that salad together. This is the key for not having to have much added dressing because frankly, I just washed my Vitamix and I didn't want to dirty it up. So I just like took it and mashed it in there so that when I put those into my wraps, I can really like mold it, wrap it tight. You can see it on Instagram, I just posted that. Very beautiful. And you can even use that more of a crouton type existence. Do y'all like my new bowl? This thing was $2. Look at it. It's bamboo. And then it has its counterpart, which is great for sauce for $1. Because this was on clearance at Marshall's. This one had been $20. I don't know what this is made out of, nor what kind. Apparently, somebody's proud of it, but I was going to pay that price. So anyway, I just wanted to tell y'all that. And I wanted to tell you to quit letting other people define what is cool? Be the cool kid and dance your way through your life every dang day your own way, right? And try those wraps. The mixture was like half a cup of chia seeds, about two cups of water, a little over half of a blender of the pumpkin meat, you know, right up under the pumpkin skin, though not the slimy insides, and whatever spices I wanted. I think I put paprika and cayenne and whatever I had I threw in there. And a little lemon or lime juice will be good in there. Kick it up in your Vitamix just a little bit until it's pourable. Pour it in your dehydrator on your Texflex sheets for 110 
um, degrees on, on your setting for however long it takes, you know? Usually just a few hours. It's going to depend on the thickness and the humidity in your home and how much pumpkin and how much water and blah, blah, blah. So I'm not going to say it will take four hours exactly and these will be done because then someone will hate on Tanny, right? <laughs> Cook them till they're done. Uncook them till they're done and leave some not quite so crispy so you can wrap it up. I'll take it, you know? So I'll be seeing y'all later. Me and y'all, the cool kids. <laughs> Dancing your way through